grateful that just what the Lord's doing in your life and how the God delivered me from death to life row. Amen. <laughs> Amen. What he's been doing in my life right now is whenever I first accepted the Lord for so many years, truly the joy of the Lord was my strength. And it was just like this this fire that raged, the fire of joy that raged in me, like a feast at the banquet table, a feast of joy with the Lord. And for about eight years, it was like this humongous feast of joy. And then all of a sudden, God put me in a situation where I had to, to grow up into, this is going to sound really weird, but grow up into tribulations. Mm -hmm. Does that sound mm -hmm. kind of like taking me from my comfort zone mm -hmm. and putting me in the lion's den and telling me it's time to um, go deeper, take, go, t uh, mm -hmm. go deeper with me in other areas because there's, you can reach out to people with the joy of the Lord and, and let Him touch them through that. But there's, I'm, I don't even know how to explain it right now. Wow. Right now, there's, a, there's a, a, a way that we can reach people through tribulations that just like the ministry that you guys have is there's inner healing and restoration. And until you've been through that yourself, you cannot, there's, you just can't minister that to others, you know, because the Lord said, comfort others wherewith ye have been comforted yourselves. Mm -hmm. And so until we've really been through the, I'm talking about the fire, until He's turned that fire up on us and, and caused us to go through it so that we could go to a deeper level with Him. Um, and, and that's what, he has done in my life just recently with my uh, stomach situation and being in my room for a while and it was like it was like I was in the wilderness mm -hmm. and I had shared with y'all but I was by no means dry I mean it, it wasn't a dry place because there's always a well of living water bubbling over no matter what because circumstances don't dictate my joy so the joy bubbles over no matter what. But um, had a really hard time with, with that situation. And the Lord had to say, I'm in there with you. What is it, Carla? I am right in there with you. And are people seeing you gripe and complain about this? Are they seeing you praise me and show them that my grace is sufficient right there in that? Um, and it was another place where he took me out of my comfort zone and said, there are people out there that are going through exactly what you're in right now until you go through it and you let me bring you through that. Mm -hmm. There is no way you can minister to them. Mm -hmm. And there was a time when I couldn't have, I'm, I'm ashamed to admit that there was a time when I would have said, get over it. You know the Lord, yeah. get over it. <laughs> yeah. But he showed me it's not that easy. Right. <laughs> you, and yeah. so he took me through something that I wouldn't have chosen for myself. And what I was sharing with you earlier is it's not about what we would choose for ourselves, but what God has chosen for us and that we accept that with joy. Just like in that book, that we accept that with joy and surrender and yield to what He's doing. And then He'll start showing us where He's at work around us, just like in the experience of God. He'll start revealing where He's at work around us most of the time through what He just put us through. You know, what He just put us through. There's going to be somebody that he's going to say, okay, you just went through it. Now here's somebody. Now you go to them and you minister to them. Mm -hmm. And so it's been pretty neat. Just like really changes your life. I mean, because you don't have to fear pain because you know the Lord will be with you in your pain. Mm -hmm. And so instead of trying to dictate circumstances, yes. you put your trust fully in the Lord. And you welcome pain because you know that in the pain you're going to have a, a depth in your relationship with Jesus yes. and with other people. Because it's really, yes. I'd say in our ministry, the strength has been that he brought us through a lot of pain and sorrow. And he's never failed us. And so when we see others in those same kind of situations, like you just said, mm -hmm. you can just give them just hope and say, he's going to see you through. Mm -hmm. And you know, one thing, I had gotten to a point, I was, I was um, at a point in my life where I believed that, 
I mean, we all absolutely know that God is well, well able to heal us, to do anything in our lives that He so chooses, just with a blink of an eye, God is capable of doing anything, but He's not always going to do that because right. it's not always mm -hmm. what's good for us. Mm -hmm. And I, while I was in the room, and I, w my husband and I were really praying for for healing, for physical healing mm -hmm. for me and everything, and it was like I just jumped right up on the throne and just demanded this from God. Mm -hmm. You're, I'm your child. You're supposed to heal me, God. You know, uh, I'm not supposed to be going through this humiliation and this tribulation and I was telling him how to be God in my life. You know, your word promises me these things. They're mine because I'm in a covenant relationship with you. They're mine. You've got to do this. And when I finally shut up and could listen to him, he said, well, he said, I will do what I know is best for you. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm God. I'm God. You right. let me be God in your life. And he's not... We. He also, he showed me that the way that the world sees humiliation is not the way we should look at it. Mm -hmm. Because what he calls it in our lives is tribulation. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that I went through, I thought, this is so humiliating. Well, I'm going to tell you that, that Jesus truly does heal you inside when you're going through something like that. If he doesn't bring the physical healing, which he is well capable of, but if he chooses not to do that, either right away or until you get home, Mm -hmm. um, the inner healing comes when you re truly, truly release that to Him. Put it at the foot of the cross and leave it there. And tell him, you know, I just had gotten to that place where, you know what, God, I, I can't do it anymore. I'm at the end of my rope on this. I've prayed, <laughs> I've begged, I've demanded, and I'm, I've got to let it go to you because it's starting to get the best of me. And He said, that's what I've been waiting on, yeah. Carla. <laughs> you know, so, and then... He started restoring to me the joy of my salvation yes. again yeah. and that peace mm -hmm. because I was allowing that, the enemy, to take that from me mm -hmm. slowly, mm -hmm. you know. So he was able to restore that when I released that to him completely and said, okay, God, you don't have to do anything. You are well able to do everything, but you don't have to do anything because you know what, what road you have to take me down to get me exactly where you want me. You know, and in reference to me, well, it tells me a story that he lives in you.